Are you ready for this? Hey, this is my son Jacob. Hi, son Ted Parrot. Jacob, how do you feel about Java? I'm good. Let me ask him. Yes? Ow! Don't put my finger. Yes. He says, my parent says he feels good about it too. Oh, okay. So it's here, the following error code XK line. Um, and it's telling us here um, incompatible types. So I'm trying to take a string and, and store it in an integer. And that's, you know, it's a different data type, so it's an incompatible type. Well, it just so happens Java does have a function that will let me convert that. And when I call this function, I get a string, or a string is returned. Um, and there are several ways I could do it. I could make a temporary string and assign it to that. Um, and then I could call you know functions to convert it but the particular function that I want to call is integer parse int and there is a double parse double and a float parse float um, to convert back and forth from string to integer integer to string a lot of you know built-in conversion functions in Java and what I could simply do is nest the output of this function and pass it in as the argument so to this function. So this function expects a string. Well, when read line gets done, the cursor blinks, the user types in what they want to type, it returns a string data type. Integer percent will convert it to an integer, and then it could be stored in score. Now, if you don't like nesting, this is the same thing as saying this. Um, if that's not your preference, then you could make for yourself a temporary string And I could store, I, I don't want to overwrite name, but I could store that here. And perhaps you like this better, or maybe this makes it a little bit more explicit as far as seeing what happens. Okay, same thing, but without the nesting. So I have a string here called temp, and if I wanted to, I could even make this global. We could pop it up here and use it if we don't like to use the nesting there. So, we'll make it public and static to use with our main function. So again, I want to do this, and pretty much the same thing for the third question. All right, we've got their name, now we've got their score, and then we want to store their accuracy rating. Now again, this is a different data type. First is a string, next was an integer and then the third is a double so I can do this and this we'll come down here we'll ask the third question what is your accuracy rating I can store it in my temporary string not a problem but now I need to convert it and I don't want to use integer parse int. Oop, get rid of that capital in there, like I did up here. But I want to use another function, double parse double, because while score is an integer, a whole number value, accuracy rating is a double, so it's going to have a decimal value assigned to it, and therefore it needs a different conversion function. So double parse double and again you know I can pass in my string there uh, now personally I prefer nesting the first way I showed you I think it's a bit less code but maybe this is a bit easier to follow so again kind of look at the way the logic flows and the basic input output operation um, question response question response question response and then in the case of going from one data type to another we have to converse or parse a string to either an integer or a double. Okay, so let's do this and we will compile the project. Now we just want to display the results here. And to do this we'll use a process known as concatenation. I'll add two lines, tab over, and say And 
I just want to concatenate this to the variable, so and let's see, we call that full name. Okay. And I want to do the same thing, I'll just concatenate the rest of these on the way down. And we'll display three lines. Minus the extra line there. I'll put only put one line under these guys, but score and accuracy rating. Concatenate the string literals to score an accuracy rating. And let's build this project. Okay, so let's go over here and now that we've built it, we will run it. Let me bring this up here. So it says, enter your name player. Type in Charles Germany. The line and reader will take that input and store it in the string. What was your score? Say 92. And it'll take the string, or return a string, at call integer parsing, convert it to an integer, and store it in the integer. And what is your accuracy rating? And I'll say... Now that's an example using a line number reader. Review. A line number reader is a tool that allows you to take input from the console. It causes the cursor to blink and waits for the user's input. It always returns data to you in the form of a string. To use a line number reader, you must include Java's I.O. package with import Java I.O. You must declare and build an instance of the line number reader. First declare it like so, line number reader banana. Then you must initialize and instantiate it like this, banana assignment operator, new line number reader, new input stream reader, system n. When using a line number reader, you call the function readLine on the instance of the line number reader using the dot operator like so, banana readLine. You must enclose the process and try catch blocks or throw an exception. The code you place between the try braces is tried, and should something go wrong, the code you place between the catch braces will execute. Example, try, and then between those braces the code you want to execute. Catch, and then in parentheses the type of exception, and then the code to occur if an error occurs. A line number reader is an IO object, so you want to catch an IO exception. The read line function is where something might go wrong, so that is what you want to try. Example. The process I want to try is the read line function called on the line number reader banana. I want to catch an IO exception should something go wrong, and I'll simply display that on the console. The read line function returns a string object, so you need a string variable to receive the return value. Example. I'll make a temporary string. I'll catch the string return from read line, and I'll catch any IO exception that might occur. The read line function always returns a string, so if you need an integer, double, or other data type from the user, you must convert it. Java has many functions to do this, such as integer parse int and double parse double. Example. First we get input and store it in a string. So we'll make a temporary string, use the assignment operator, and store in it the string we get from read line. Then we'll catch the exception. Then we must parse or convert it because it's not the right data type. So we take an integer x and we call integer parseint and pass in the string. 